Welcome back students. In this video we're going to cover a concept called isotope abundance. So that's what goes in this first gap here. Isotope abundance. So we know that isotopes are when you have two atoms of the same number of protons. So they're the same element, like two carbons. But they have different numbers of neutrons in their nucleus which makes them isotopes of each other. So isotope, and then abundance just means the relative amount of how much you will find in nature. So the isotope abundance is the percent of all atoms of an element that are a given isotope, represented as a decimal. Well, the percent represented as a decimal, sometimes this is reported as a percentage. I'll explain what I mean when we get down here to the equation. Just to reiterate, the isotope abundance is basically how much of carbon atoms, what is the percentage of carbon atoms that is a particular isotope? So what is the percentage of carbon that is made up of the carbon-13 isotope? And so forth. Now you can represent this as a decimal or as a percentage. The general equation, I'll give you two forms of it, and you can use either one as long as you're consistent in using one or the other. But you will find it represented in both ways. So the general equation, if we are representing things as a decimal, so this is the decimal representation here, we are going to have the mass of isotope A times its decimal abundance of isotope A. We multiply those together and we add it to the mass of isotope B times the decimal abundance of B and we add that to and we keep going for as many isotopes as we have okay now the percentage this is a decimal abundance right so a decimal abundance a hundred percent would be represented as a one a fifty percent would be represented as a 0 0.5 right this is decimal abundance. If you use percentages, then all of this has to be divided by 100. So I'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, if you do this math and then you do it for every isotope that you have, add them all up, then you will get the average mass of all isotopes the average mass of all isotopes. So I'll make a little note here. If you use percentages, then the left side of the equation must be divided by 100. So what does dividing all of this by 100 do? It converts the percentages to decimals. So if you had a 50% up here in the percentage abundance, then by dividing this whole side by 100, you would end up mathematically converting those per percentages to decimals. Okay? So that's the general form of the equation, and it's with decimal abundances but if you use percentages, then the left side of the equation must be divided by 100. So I've given you a sample problem down here. This is a sample problem. It says oxygen has three stable isotopes that occur in nature. You have oxygen 16, oxygen 17, and oxygen 18. And you're given the percentages, the percentage abundance of each of them. You're also given the masses for each of those isotopes. 
So with this information and with what I've shown you up here about the general equation and how to deal with percentages, I would like for you to cal calculate the average molar mass. I'm going to change that. That's a typo. That should be atomic mass. We're not interested in the molar mass. We're not going to be reporting our answer to this in, with grams. It will be reported in what units? In AMUs. In AMU. Because we're going to calculate the average atomic mass for oxygen. And you might be saying, wait a minute, why do we have to calculate that? Isn't that what this is? Isn't this the average atomic mass in AMUs for a single oxygen atom? Yes, it is. Absolutely. So you do already have your answer on the periodic table. So what's the point of this? The point of this exercise is because I want you to understand how isotope abundances and the different masses of each isotope go into the calculation for determining that average mass. So that the number on the periodic table isn't some magic number, right? So you'll know how we got it. And that will help you understand a little bit more about what it means and how to use it. Okay, basically you're gonna to have to plug in values into an equation. Be careful about how you treat these percentages. Make sure that you round appropriately. And beware of this as well. We have combined operations. We have multiplication and we have addition. So use your order of operations and then use this multiplication sig figs rule to determine the appropriate sig figs to go in each of these parentheses before you add them. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video now and give that a shot. Okay, I'm assuming that you're coming back from having done this at work, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And let's see what we got here. So we know that the general equation is the mass of each isotope multiplied by its decimal abundance, added to, and we keep going on, and then we get the average mass of all isotopes. So to follow good form, I am going to write the general form of this equation, right? Before I plug in numbers. So the mass of, uh, and this is an oxygen 16, times its decimal abundance here. Well, I don't have the decimal abundances. I, I'm given the percentages. Now you can approach this one of two ways. I could convert this percentage to a decimal and then plug it in here. Or I could leave it as a percentage in which case I would have to divide the whole left side of the equation by 100. Either way that you want to handle that is fine. They're mathematically equivalent. I'm going to leave them as percentages and then remember that we have to divide everything by 100. Oop, I wasn't going to plug in numbers. So this is the um, percent abundance of 16. Oxygen 16. And then we add it to a mass of oxygen 17 times the percent abundance. ABD is an abbreviation for an abundance of oxygen 17. And I've got a third isotope here, a mass of oxygen 18 times the percent abundance of oxygen 18. And because I've used percentages for the abundance and not decimals, what do I have to do to this whole side of the equation? I have to divide it by 100 to get those percentages to be decimals. And then this gives me the average mass of a carbon atom. So there's my equation that I'm going to use, and now I start plugging in numbers. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this and then skip a bit so that you don't have to sit there and wait until I write all the numbers. So I'll just hop to, uh, to where I have all the numbers written down. So 
So there we have it with all of the numbers plugged in. So I'll let you uh, re reflect on that and take a look and see if you've got the numbers in the right place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve the calculations within each parentheses and apply the multiplication rule so that then I have the correct sig figs in each parenthesis. Okay, there are the answers for each of the parenthetical mathematical calculations, and I have applied the appropriate sig fig rule. Six sig figs, five sig figs, rounded to five sig figs. Five and two, rounded to two. Six and three, rounded to three. Okay. Now I'm going to add these together, and you will notice that this number, because we're adding now, this number is the least precise because it only goes one place past the decimal. So my answer can only go one place past the decimal. This 100 is considered to be an exact number because there are exactly 100% in a unity value. So it's not going to limit my answer. But my answer is going to be the numerator rounded to only one place to the right of the decimal and then divided by 100. And we get this value. In the numerator, divided by 100. And are you starting to see where we get, we're getting the, the number on the periodic table from? We divide that by 100 and we just move the decimal two places over. And what are my units going to be here at the end? The correct sig figs and the units is going to be AMU. I specified a M U because it's the average mass of a carbon atom. And there we go. Does that number look familiar? Because it, it should indeed, because that is the atomic mass of oxygen, the average atomic mass of oxygen. I mentioned I wrote carbon up here. You probably caught that before I did. Because this is not a talking about carbon anymore. This is talking about oxygen. Four. And just to take a look again, there it is on the periodic table, 15.999. So where did this number come from? You can see it is the average. I've taken the average of the masses of each isotope. And the mass of each isotope has been given a weighting factor by its percent abundance. So the mass times the percent abundance, and then if you use percentages, it has to be divided by 100. If the abundance is already in decimal format, I do not need to use the 100 here. I can leave the whole thing without dividing by 100. If it's in percentages, I need the 100. If it's in decimal format, then I do not use the 100. I don't need to divide that by 100. Okay? And that's isotope abundance.